Hello, and welcome to the Reader's Advisory for Native American and Indigenous Peoples Heritage Month. My name is Amanda Deland, and I'm a librarian one at Akakik Branch Library. As part of Prince George's County Memorial Library System's Celebration of Indigenous Heritage, we have selected some of our collection's best books written by or starring Native people to spotlight, including some personal favorites. Be sure to check out the Native American and Indigenous Peoples Heritage page on our Heritage Hub afterwards for even more titles to browse. The books I am covering in this program are roughly in order of age appropriateness, so if you only want books for adults, those will be near the end. We will begin with picture books for children. May We Have Enough to Share by Richard Van Camp is a board book with simple wishes or prayers that features beautiful beadwork on every page, as well as photos of indigenous children and families. The prayers are unique in that they are pleased for the well being of both the person speaking and the community, in that if you have enough to share or help, you are secure as well. It is a delightful, heartfelt little book for a parent to read with their child. We All Play, Kime Tawana, by Julie Flett. This book will delight children with its beautiful watercolor illustrations and fun action words for all sorts of animal actions. Foxes sniff and sneak, buffalo rumble and roll, and seals bubble and bend through the pages, while Cree children of all ages frolic and play alongside them. The book ends with animals roosting and yawning as they and the children fall asleep. The back includes a handy glossary with the Cree names of each animal shown, along with a pronunciation guide. We Are Grateful, Oja Heriga by Tracy Sorrell. We Are Grateful provides a look at the everyday activities of modern Cherokee families through the, throughout the seasons. Each page has examples of cultural activities in nature, as well as Cherokee words for seasons or family, complete with a pronunciation guide. In each season, we are reminded to be grateful for what the seasons bring and the life we share. It's a great book to read this holiday season, but it can easily be read all year round. Native American Night Before Christmas, adapted by Gary Robinson. This delightful book retells the traditional night before Christmas rhyme through a Native American lens. Moccasins are hung up in a teepee, old red shirt drives a sleigh pulled by eight white buffalo, and children receive gifts of toys and fry bread. The rhymes are clever and the illustrations are very colorful. A great bedtime book this winter. Look, Grandma, Ni Elisi by Art Colson. This book tells the story of a young Cherokee boy trying to find the right container to display his hand carved marbles while subtly introducing concepts of volume, capacity, and area. Each container he tries is inadequate in some way too short, too small, too wide. By the time he finds the right container, Kids will be able to see why this one fits all the conditions, and they will learn several words in Cherokee along the way. This concludes the children's picture books. We will now look at children's chapter books. The first of our children's chapter books is Jojo McCoon's The Used to Be Best Friend by Don Quigley. Jojo McCoons is a spirited young Ojibwe girl who lives on a reservation. This first volume of her adventures, The Used to Be Best Friend, takes us through a week in her life. Everything from her concern over her cat Mimi needing a shot, to drawing a picture for language arts, to being upset over her best friend hanging out with other children. With relatable storyline and fun illustrations, The Used to Be Best Friend is perfect for young readers to start on their chapter books. Res Dogs 
by Joseph Bruchet. Res Dogs is a novel in verse about Malian, a young Wabanaki girl who is visiting her grandparents when lockdown starts for the COVID-19 pandemic. Malian and her grandparents take action to keep each other safe. And so does Malsum, one of the dogs who wanders the reservation, who shows up at their door. As the days pass, Malian learns a lot about how her community has faced dangers like pandemics in the past, as well as cultural history and mythology that has surprising connections to her daily life. Ancestor Approved, edited by Cynthia Littish Smith. Ancestor Approved is a collection of fictional short stories centered around the real life Dance for Mother Earth powwow held in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Young Native Americans from many tribes and backgrounds meet, play, argue, and dance at this event. Kids will be sure to find something they enjoy in this collection. Whether it's a heartwarming story about a girl getting her first regalia, a mystery about a missing relative, or the point of view of a wandering reservation dog. Sisters of the Never Sea by Cynthia Letish Smith. Sisters of the Never Sea is a modern take on the classic tale of Peter Pan, except in this story, British Wendy and Muskegee Creek Lily are stepsisters. When Peter Pan appears in their bedroom, Wendy and the girl's little brother Michael are happy to go with him, but Lily is left behind. As each girl finds their way to Neverland, they learn more about the magic and secrets of this mysterious place and find out how valuable family truly is. Healer of the Water Monster by Brian Young. Fans of Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson series will love Healer of the Water Monster. Nathan, a Navajo boy, is staying with his grandmother for the summer on a, her reservation to complete a plant research project. At least that's what he told his father so he didn't have to hang out with his dad's new girlfriend. But Nathan's summer takes a turn for the weird when he witnesses a horned toad walking on two legs and stealing his seeds. Soon Nathan is on a quest among the creatures and deities of Navajo mythology to find a cure for one of the holy beings, a water monster, and may save the reservation in the process. This concludes the children's chapter books. We will now take a look at teen novels. Surviving the City, Volume 2, From the Roots Up by Tasha Spillett and Natasha Donovan. In last year's Reader's Advisory, we recommended the graphic novel Surviving the City. This year, I am proud to announce that Volume 2, From the Roots Up, has been released. The story mostly follows Des from the first volume, who has now lost her grandmother and must live in a group home. Des struggles with her grief and with expressions of her newly found identity as Two-Spirit, on the LGBTQIA spectrum. Her friend Miguan is also growing up and beginning to have feelings for a native classmate whose brother was killed by Canada's police force. As Des and Miguan confront these issues that split native communities apart, they struggle to find a way to bring their own community together again. Rain is not my Indian name by Cynthia Latish Smith. In this 20th anniversary edition of Rain Is Not My Indian Name, Rain Berghoff is struggling to deal with her grief over the sudden death of a childhood friend when she gets involved in a small town power struggle over a summer camp for native children. With her patchwork white and native heritage, Rain doesn't want to stand for either side and chooses instead to follow her passion of photography to cover the story of the camp. But as the story develops, Rain discovers surprising truths about her lost friend and her new friends, and she must decide how much she wants to be a part of their lives. Redbone, the true story of a Native American rock band by Christian Stabler, Sonia Paoloni, 
and Tybalt Balahi. Redbone is a biographical comic about the fall, about the rise and fall of one of America's most popular native bands. Framed as a casual interview from one of the band's own members, Redbone tracks the early careers of the musicians, the formation of the band, and the commercial successes, along with the rise of the American Indian movement for civil rights in the early 70s. But successful artists were discouraged from getting involved with the civil rights movement, and eventually Redbone had to choose between what they had worked for and pride in their ancestry. Everything You Wanted to Know About Indians But Were Afraid to Ask by Anton Chur. This book is pretty much exactly what the title says. Dr. Anton Chur, who belongs to the Ojibwe Nation, has had experience with being a de facto ambassador for Native people since he was young, most often because the people he met had not met anyone openly identifying as Native before. In order to help both Native and non-Native people navigate the confusing territory of stereotypes, history, and current events surrounding Native Americans, he has compiled a book of common questions asked about Native people and well-researched answers to those questions. Questions range from basic, like what terms are appropriate for talking about each tribe and why do Natives have reservations or First Nations, to downright offensive, like, do all Indians have drinking problems? And why are Indian politics such a viper's pit? Each question is answered frankly and provides plenty of information to sate your curiosity and begin your own research. Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bowie. One of the most popular native young adult books this year is Firekeeper's Daughter, a thriller about investigating a drug ring in an Ojibwe community. 18 year old Donis Fontan is a biracial unenrolled Ojibwe woman who is looking forward to a fresh start outside her small town where the scandal of her birth and family tragedies still haunt her. But her plans are derailed when she witnesses a shocking murder Donis reluctantly agrees to go undercover to find the culprits, only to discover secrets that could tear her community apart. If you read this book and love it, keep an eye out for the soon to come Netflix adaptation. Apple, Skin to the Core by Eric Gansworth. In this memoir and verse, young adult author Eric Gansworth reflects on his life growing up on a reservation where he was called an apple, a derogatory term for someone who is native on the outside but acts like a white person. He delves into the horrifying history of residential schools where native children like his grandparents were stripped of their culture to make them model citizens and the lasting effects it has had on his family and culture. There are also more prosaic poems on things like pop culture like the relatability of Star Wars to reservation kids and Eric's own deep love of the Beatles. Apple is layered with deep emotion that gets better with every read. This concludes the teen novels. We will now look at adult novels. Winter Counts by David Heska Wanley Waden. Winter Counts is a fast-paced native crime novel set on a Lakota reservation. The protagonist, Virgil Wounded Horse, is an enforcer, someone who is hired to deliver justice in the form of beatings to criminals that can't or won't be prosecuted under the American legal system. His occupation makes him unpopular in both white and native communities, but Virgil gets by fairly well until a drug ring supplies his nephew with enough heroin to overdose. Suddenly his quest for justice turns personal. As he follows the drug cartel's trail, he finds that his native identity may play a bigger part in this case than he ever guessed. Living Nations, Living Words by Joy Harjo. This poetry anthology is a written companion to the Living Nations Living Words map on the Library of Congress website, 
This map is the signature project of Joy Harjo, the first Native American US poet laureate. And it features audio recordings of each poem by their authors in the places they call home. In the anthology, the various poems are preceded by biographies and pictures of their authors who write about everything from creation myths to displacement to love of their homelands. It is a deeply moving collection of poems by contemporary indigenous authors. Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. Black Sun is a thrilling sci-fi fantasy inspired by the civilization of the pre-Columbian Americas. The narrative follows multiple characters. Jala, a disgraced sea captain whose voice can calm the ocean's waters. Naranpa, a sun priest tasked with preparing her city for a winter festival that will soon be graced with a solar eclipse. And Serapio, a mysterious young man with scarred shut eyes who believes he has a great destiny. As each of these character stories slowly converge in the holy city of Toba, Black Sun sets up an ex explosive conclusion from which their society may never be the same. We had a little real estate problem by Cliff Nesteroff. This book is a remarkable dive into the little known history of Native American comedians by acclaimed his com comedy historian, Cliff Nesteroff. The book switches between historical native comedians and contemporary ones, telling much of their stories in their own words through interviews. Both hilarious and heartbreaking, real estate problem shatters the myth of Native Americans as stoic and sad, revealing just how funny natives have always been. Finally, The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. Seamlessly blending classic horror and a dramatic narrative with sharp social commentary, The Only Good Indians follows four American Indian men after a disturbing event from their youth puts them in a desperate struggle for their lives. Tracked by an entity bent on revenge, these childhood friends are helpless as the culture and traditions they left behind catch up to them in a violent, vengeful way. That concludes our reader's advisory for this year's Native American Heritage Month. Thank you for joining me in exploring the many titles PGCMLS has to offer regarding Native American and Indigenous people's heritage. Be sure to check out our page on the Heritage Hub for book lists and more, including movies, biographies, and events throughout November. Have a great day.